Welcome again to Ninja Bot Painting. Today we have the Taco Truck from the Deadpool and Bob Agent of Hydra kit by Marvel Crisis Protocol. Today we'll be painting it in the colors as you see. Before we get started, I'd ask that you hit the like and subscribe button as it helps to keep me motivated to keep making these. Now, you may be asking, why is it silver and red? And that is because originally I wasn't going to do a tutorial for this, but I wasn't really happy with how it was coming out. So I decided I would do a tutorial and I would change the colors up pretty vividly. As you can see, if you change your mind in a project, it's really not that big a deal to go back and change what you've done, as long as you remember to keep your paints thin and you don't do anything that is so thick that you can't go over it again later. So first we're going to apply our teal here. We're going to get all of this textured area all over the truck done in teal. And this is going to act kind of as our base color. We're going to come back and work on it a little bit more as we go, but we're going to go ahead and use this as our base color. Now, what's nice about this is the details are sharp enough that with nice thin paint, you can see a lot of them even with the paint over them. And what I mean by that is as the paint dries, it doesn't obscure the details that are in these little fabrics here. Now, for my vision for this, I imagined this being almost like a cloth material on the sides of the truck because that's about the silliest thing I could think of. And I thought it would be more interesting than the traditional metal. Now, something that's worth bringing to your attention as we move forward with this, this black, there's nothing wrong with the product, but this black absolutely drives me crazy. And I ended up choosing this black because I can afford to use more of this paint than to use the Citadel Abaddon black that I have sitting around for when I need black to be black. Now, as you see, it's very, very streaky, and that is partially because of the paint that I'm using, but it's mostly also because the primer that I used on this was a Rust-Oleum Silver. I was hoping that I could cut some a little bit of my time out by using a silver undercoat and prime. Unfortunately, the, one of the side effects of using this particular primer was that it made the surface very, very slick and had very little surface tension for the paint to stick to. It made this surface so very smooth that I really struggled to get this less than ideal black on it. So what I did to resolve this is I made sure my black was thin and I went in and made horizontal stripes, then vertical stripes. And I would do this all throughout the truck for all the black areas. I won't film every black paint stroke I make just because there's going to be so many of them because I'm going to have to put two, three, maybe even four layers of black on some parts of this truck in order to get a nice smooth consistent color but that is what I've signed up for now because I'm too far into it to switch over and I don't want to use the Abaddon black for a model this size that's just a terrain piece not that there's anything wrong with terrain pieces but I'm not interested in using the most expensive paints I have on terrain pieces in large volumes so that's what's going on here so we're gonna go ahead and finish this out and get all this base coat black and we'll do the windows because we're going to paint those up in a little bit. I will avoid doing the top of the truck for now. I have some plans for that. Uh, as you saw in the intro to the video, we're going to letter out Deadpool's name on it. I like to imagine that Deadpool funds this truck and has it follow him around so that when he's done his battles, he can stop and have a chimichanga. I don't know. It amuses me to no end. Of 
before I start doing the black off camera, I just wanted to show you a little bit. This is what the process looks like. You can see my black is, is fairly thin. It's a little thinner than I probably would normally have it. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of letting the paint sink into the space between where the thicker paint from the last step is so that it can help me get rid of these streaks. Because what will happen is as the paint dries and the water element of the paint evaporates and the medium and the pigment are left, it will sink into the lowest crevices. And since there's a slight texture difference between the layer underneath it and the layer on top of it, as it dries, it'll help to start smoothing that surface out. It, it's a lot of words for a real simple concept. Just give it a thin paint coat and then give it another thin paint coat and before you know it, it's going to be exactly what you envisioned or it's going to be an acceptable alternative to what you envisioned. Don't rush the process, trust the process. All right, so in the interest of being transparent, if I were gonna do this model again, I wouldn't do this. I would have completely skipped this step. I would go through with a green shade from Citadel instead, but I have this ink and I don't get to use it very much, so I thought this would be a fun project to give me more green in my blue. This ink is called Thylocyanine. It is the weirdest name I've ever seen for an ink, and the ink is one of the most misbehaving inks I've ever worked with. Now, usually what you can do with an ink is you can let it sit in these recesses and it'll, it'll behave itself and it'll dry the way that you would want it to so that it's in the uh, valleys and the, the crevices better so that when you're done, you get a nicer and more clean product where it's tinted the top color, but it's rusted kind of nicely. Unfortunately, this ink uh, just did not want to do that for me. So I went and I got the original blue again and I went back and I dry brushed some because this is my way to clean up ink. And it did work, but it still, it left a, a less than I would have liked and it required more steps to fix. So if you're gonna follow along, then don't make that mistake. Just get a green wash and do it the right way. Don't mess with that ink, it's not worth your time. I think that a lot of uh, painting tutorials, especially in the modern era, try to show you uh, they're doing this process without showing you the parts of the process that we all go through where something's just not quite right and you have to kind of play with it to fix it. So I want to show you exactly what the process looked like for me and do as little off camera as I possibly can so that you see everything that's happening. 
That's a quick reminder for myself what color blue this is as I'm editing it out, in case you're wondering why I do that. But we sped the footage up, of course, so that you don't have to sit here all day, because this, this project took some time. We're now going to get our pink horror out, and we're going to start playing with some of these smaller details. Pink horror is by Citadel, and it's a really fascinating color. It's, it's a very dull pink. But I really like it, especially because it covers really well and it behaves exceptionally. I really can't say enough nice things about it. It really has become my go-to pink for any project that I'm doing. And if I want a brighter or lighter pink, usually I'll put this pink down as the base. It is very much my hope that I'm able to impress upon you, dear viewer, the importance of understanding that this hobby, this passion, this pastime really is doing something and then tidying it up. You know, there are very, very few times where there's no room for error and you must get it right the first time or there's no way to fix it. You know, right now, this is going to be one of the more tedious parts of this and if you want to skip this part, I don't blame you. But if you've got a little time that you're willing to put into it, it really is going to make a difference. Now, especially because that ink didn't act right earlier, Carbon Black is my absolute favorite ink. It is the ink I use the most. It is the ink I have the best working relationship with. And it is the ink that least often does something so screwy that it's difficult to fix. Now, since these grooves have gotten a little thinner now, we've put ink and paint in them a few times, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to line each of them with my black ink. I'm going to line them going both ways. I'm going to line every single one of them on both sides and on the top. Now, that's going to be a little bit of work, but I promise it's going to really make a difference in the long run. Once we're done, because you're going to get a little ink on the pads, no matter how hard you try, we'll go back with the blue and we'll touch it up. And, and I know I harp on this a lot, but I just I cannot express to you how important this mindset is. You know, do it, do the best you can with it, then go back after it's dry and tidy it up. The other thing I'd recommend, especially when you're doing something like this that, you know, a steady hand is absolutely going to make your life easier, is it's easier to pull the brush down than it is to push the brush up. You know, the ink and paint in general, especially when you're dealing with wet paint like this, prefers to go down. That's how gravity works. That's how liquid works. So instead of fighting it and trying to push it up, turn the model so that you can have it going down as often as you can. Now, this is another one of those things that we, we do a lot in our videos here is I like to line the area around what I'm painting with the ink to create a distinction and also to create a shadow so that it gives it the illusion of being three-dimensional even if it's not or it makes the three-dimensional aspect of it pop more so it's easier to identify. That extra contrast really sh is striking for the human eye and when the human eye sees a contrast between light and dark, you interpret it as a pleasant thing to see. That's how our brains are wired, that's how our eyes are wired. Don't mind that, it's my logo falling down in the background. We're going to do the same thing for these little ones, and these little ones are going to be much more difficult just because they're smaller and it's, it's harder to see, it really is a pain in the butt. But I promise you, it's the same rules apply, take your time, you know, do it and then we'll tidy it up later. You know, a, a simple dry brush is going to cover up all the ink that goes where it's not supposed to. I'd also recommend in retrospect that you not put the, uh, the thing up there. As you can see, I tested it to see just how well glued it actually was to see if I could just pop it off, finish this and put it back on. But it looked like it was going to be more hassle than it was worth. So I just decided to buckle down and do the best I could with the situation I was in.
All right, so one of the things I also kind of recommend, just as something I always find to be very helpful, is if you can find a small detail to finish, it can really help your morale. Because looking at a model, especially a challenging or large model, and seeing that some of it is actually completely done and you don't have to do any more to that particular part, can really make it easier as the grind starts to wear on you for the more tedious parts. You know, especially if you're going to follow the way that I do stuff, I tend to put a lot of ink lines in following details, and that can be a really tedious thing to do, and it can really do great on your nerves. So having a part of the model that you can look at and see, hey, that's done, and it looks great, it was worth the effort, can help the morale as you're doing the more tedious work. All right, so let's take just a second out and discuss this paint. This is Vallejo Model Color Fluorescent Magenta. This paint and I have a real love-hate relationship. It is thick, it doesn't cover well, it is almost completely translucent, it is incredibly difficult to get it to do what it's supposed to do. Having said that, if you put the horror pink underneath it, and you put on a layer or two of relatively smoothed, watered down a little bit magenta, it really does create a very pretty pink. It's a very poppy pink, whereas the, uh, the horror pink is a very muted pink. This is a very vibrant pink. So I don't know that I would recommend this color unless you're a little more experienced and you're okay and you understand that this color is going to be troublesome for you. And it's gonna require a little extra work and it's gonna require a little extra layer and time, but it does produce a unique result. So the way I'm going to do these windows is a little bit trickier than what I would normally ask you to do. So we're going to start with this imperial blue and we're going to get a nice solid base color from the top of the windows to the bottom of the windows. Once we get that base color in, we're going to go back and we're going to start mixing colors. Now, mixing colors is a little bit more of an advanced technique, but it's not much more. And if you've gotten this far in the project, I'm confident you can handle it. So we'll start again, get your base color in there. Try not to let it be any streaker than it has to be. And if you don't have these colors, you can always just substitute anything you see with an equivalent of. You know, dark blue works just fine. You don't necessarily need exactly what we have. I was waiting for that to dry, I decided to go ahead and start working on the menu plate here. So one of the best ways i found to do this is to just gently make mostly downward strokes roughly in the shape of what you're looking for. Since this is going to be Deadpool's taco truck, if I end up with kind of messy letters, it's going to be fine. 
So as you get that first bit of layer down and make sure your paint is the appropriate level of thin or this will be hard, you can just kind of add to it and manipulate the letter until you get it where you want it to look. Alright, so the next part of this seems like it's going to be really difficult, but I promise with a little bit of a trick, it's not that bad. So you take your white, make sure it's watered to the white level, you want about the consistency of 2% milk, I'm going to put a few dots down the side to give me kind of an idea of where a menu item would be. It's Deadpool, so we're going to make it like there's tons and tons of options here, it's as if he's going to pick anything other than tacos and chimichangas, but we're going to go ahead and entertain that thought. Now, the secret to making lettering when you're looking at something that's scaled like this to make it look like the letters are there and we just can't read them because we're too far away is to gently squiggle your brush up and down in a pattern. Make sure that you're going up, make sure you're going down, put different amounts of space, put different bits of up squiggle and down squiggle, and what it'll do is it'll start to create the illusion of text. So don't stress yourself out about it. This is not a make or break detail. If you want to completely skip this, you can. I've also seen a pretty interesting thing where somebody has taken printer and printed out images and shrunk them with a digital program to the size and then just glued them in. That's another option too, but that's not what we're going to do here today. Once we get this done, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. It looks like there's a bunch of jumbled text and it's a little bit messy. So that's pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. Alright, so I decided to get a little fancy here. You certainly don't have to do this. There's nothing wrong with where we're at with the taco truck as it stands. But if you want to, since we've already put down a nice base color, Flash Gets Yellow is a fantastic yellow, but it does not cover very well. So it has to have an under color that's nice and done. So go ahead and put that in and do the little details. Now I know, I know, I'm going to have to put probably three layers of this yellow on to get this part of this Deadpool signia here to actually be yellow. I've already decided that I'm alright making that decision and doing that, so we're going to go ahead and start putting the first layers down on it. This is going to be just like the black. Don't get discouraged if it doesn't look right at first, at second, at third. Just keep putting thinned out layers on it. You will get there. When it comes to red, there really is no red I like more than Mephisto Red by Games Workshop. It is, without a doubt, my go-to red for almost any situation. Now by putting that red at the bottom of the words in the taco, it makes it look like the taco words were highlighted and written in a more playful way, and we can pick that out from a distance because of the way that the undercolors were so bright. So that makes it nice and pleasant to look at. We're going to go ahead and put the brighter, more vibrant red on the Deadpool mask as well, since that is the red I want to end with on his mask. This will also give me a chance to touch up anywhere that that ink spilled out of the original holes. As you can see, the yellow is still drying, so we're going to try hard not to mess with the yellow. All right, now that the flash kits on the underside has dried, we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit more on. 
Again, this is going to be one of those colors that you just have to have faith that as you go, it will get better. Go ahead and put that on. As you can kind of see, at least I can see, it's already covering a lot, and a lot of the parts underneath it that were still showing through are starting to look a little better. When this dries, it may still need one more layer in order to be a smooth, clean finish, but we're getting there, and really that's all you can ask for. All right, next up we're gonna take medium blue and we're gonna do the top probably three-fourths of this window. Now, what, we're, what we need to do is make sure that there's a little bit of a streakiness, a vertical streakiness, as the two colors meet. And what's gonna happen is once we apply the wash at the end of this, it's gonna help blend all these different kind of blues together. And these streakiness is just gonna give the wash places where it can meet the two colors now, once you get the, a good bit of that streak going on, when you put the wash on it, the wash will darken both colors and just help it make a more uh, seamless transition between the two colors. We are going for a pretty extreme color change here because that's kind of the effect I'm looking for. So it's really important that there be a little bit of texture for that where the two colors meet. Now for this next part we're going to do much the same but this time we're going to take the medium blue and a sky blue and we're going to mix them about 50 50. we're going to do basically the same thing we did with our last one except this time we're only going to do about half of the medium blue so there'll be a, a brighter light blue at the top and a darker deep blue at the bottom but we still want to make sure that each layer of blue gets its own little bit of space in order to be seen so it's important again to make sure you're pulling these colors down to create that almost raindroppy look to it or uh, willow tree look as you streak the colors. That's going to be really important especially once we apply that wash at the end stages of this. So this is going to give us kind of that, that visual illusion of color and really at the end of the day it's going to make a real nice bright set of blues to pop against the darker colors. Now we're going to use just sky blue and again we're going to do about half of our half color. So it's just at the very top and a little bit under that that you're going to be able to see this pure sky blue. You should be able to see like a nice uh, transition of coloring here where you can see each blue pretty vividly and it gives us kind of a, a, a pulled down look. You're going to have to have faith in me we're going to make this work. So, I decided I wanted to go ahead and take a break from doing the rest of it and start tackling this giant flat area on top. I decided since in my mind Deadpool owned this truck, it would be funny to me if he had his name written on the top of it. So I decided I would go ahead and just kind of pencil out some of his name with this Mephiston Red, which again, my go-to red. Now, it's not super important that the letters be as neat as they possibly can at this stage. It's more about figuring out where the letters are going to actually be and then filling out the center of where those letters are. Now, since it's Deadpool and he's a little zany, I have the P and the D going off the top of it intentionally because it looks like it was done by somebody who wasn't trying very hard. Ironically, making something look like somebody made it without trying hard is actually very difficult and requires a lot of very hard work. But, follow along, you know, if you don't want to do this step, just paint the top black and call it a day. 
But if you do want to give it a try, I think it really adds a lot of character, especially because as you're playing the game, you're always looking at the top of the truck. And to have it say something interesting makes it a much more visually interesting piece, I think. We're going to do the same thing we did with the menu and go through and add some yellow and a little bit of white to try and make this pop a little bit better. So we'll get the flash gets yellow. Now what you're going to do at this point is just the top, I'd say no more than the top half of it, you're going to add this yellow to it. What this does is it creates a real fun transition between red and yellow, which makes it pop more at a distance. Now once we fill the black in around this and use it to make sure our letters are nice and as tight as I want them to be, these extra colors really help make it pop from a distance. We'll go ahead and take some heavy red now and we're just going to create a little bit of darker red right at the bottom parts of the letter. It doesn't make a huge difference when you're looking at it really up close, but your eye can see the difference in the color and the difference in the red will create some additional contrast. And I really can't stress to you enough that contrast, the more that you can create, the more visually appealing what you're doing will be. You just have to make sure that you're creating contrast within an appropriate color wheel. And just a touch of white right at the very tips of the letters is going to complete our lettering for this particular model. All right now to make sure that it's easy to make a line between the lettering and with the black we're going to put on the top, I'm just going to take my black ink and I'm going to make sure that I shape the letters. This will give me a chance to hide any part of the letter that I'm not happy with and let me control the shaping of the letter just for this last little bit.
All right, just like the yellow, this orange is going to take a couple of layers in order to get it quite right. So I know going into this, that this is going to require probably three layers in order to get it all the way to the bright orange that I'm looking for. So just be patient with it and remember that, you know, layers are your friend. Keep your paint thin. It's a mistake to try to thicken it out to reduce the number of layers you have to do. You'll just end up making more work for yourself or you'll end up with a really lumpy product and neither of those are worth your time. All right, now we're going to take our Dark Coven Nightshade and we're going to just go all the way over the, these windows. Just a little bit of it. You don't need a ton. It's, it's wonderful what this blue is going to do for us. It's going to create a little bit of that section between them. We're going to go back to our black now that we're finished with that. And we're just going to clean up any of the details from where that blue and those yellow layers got put in. That way it's nice and stark between the brightness of the yellow and the orange and the darkness of the truck. All right, now we're gonna do just the same thing we did on the sides, just on the top. It's going to take at least two, maybe three decent layers thinned out appropriately in order to get this silver hidden. You may not need quite as many if you used a different primer. So just do however many layers it takes. Keep it smooth. Remember that if it looks streaky with the first layer, that's okay. Just go back and do it in a different direction with the next layer and keep going until you get a smooth finish.
All right, next we're gonna use gray sear, thin down appropriately to do some angled stripes. Now what this is gonna do, a couple of things this is gonna do, is it's gonna create a visual interest point on this dark blue back that these windows have. And it's also gonna make it so that the windows appear to have almost a reflection of light, even at a distance. This is gonna make it so that if you're looking at the piece from a few feet away, or if you're looking at the piece from across the room, it's going to be visually striking at both distances. All right, next we're gonna use Averland Sunset to just create a point of contrast with all this dark coloration. Since we have this feature on it, we're gonna go ahead and make it bright yellow. We, not as bright as the yellow in the Deadpool sign, but still very bright compared to the dark muted colors of the teal and the black.
Next up, we're gonna use the bone color just to get the taco to a nice bony color. Now it's time to do some of the silver trim work. We'll be using gunmetal from Vallejo for this. We're just going to go through and get all the trim around the edge of the taco truck resolved at this stage. As I'm sure you're starting to notice, having a little bit of this silver trim against all of this dark black back really creates a lot of visual interest. The bright colors against the dark back colors really helps the eye see it and notice it. So it's pleasing to us as we look at it. Next up, we're going to use Mephiston Red again. We're going to do the closing part of this taco truck and we're going to do the tray part of the taco truck. All right, we're going to touch up some of the Deadpool faces while we've got the red out.
A little bit of contrast paint over the wheels will give us a slightly different kind of black so that it doesn't look like the same black as the actual truck. We'll go ahead and get the symbol on the front of the truck painted up red. going to take a little bit of our darker yellow here and we're just going to paint the top tips of each of the little flames on the symbol that way we get that kind of yellow red that we've been doing with a couple of the other spots here in the truck we're going to take our brighter yellow and we're going to paint just the very tips of the little flames here this way we have kind of a natural gradients between the colors and the light and darker yellows I also put just a touch of it at the top of the Deadpool just to help it pop a little so that it looks like lights catching off it. You don't have to do any of this, but I think all of this really helps and isn't that hard to do. That, that's it. You've completed the truck. You can go through and give it a nice, generous, dull coat now to make sure that you can handle it as you use it. And be proud of yourself. You did a fantastic job.